Hello, welcome to another episode of the Knits and Burls podcast. My name is Annie and I'm coming to you from Katy, Texas, where I live with my husband and our three very soon to be four kiddos. Um, I am currently 39 weeks pregnant, so very close to the end of welcoming our fourth kiddo. So um, just bear with me if I have any shortness of breath today. I am definitely running out of space, but I wanted to hop on here and share with you what I have been making this last month. I have been doing a lot of knitting and crafting, so I have a lot to share with you today, and I hope that you can join me. Um, I am currently finishing up my afternoon cup of coffee. I'm using one of my favorite mugs, which is my friend Laura's favorite mug that I have. This is a Starbucks mug that I got many, many years ago um, for probably about like $12, um, but a few years ago I looked up online how much it was selling for on eBay and it was for like $60 or something like that. Um, so it's just kind of a fun mug that um, has has become priceless because it's so pretty but also because now it's really expensive. So I guess if I ever want to make money off of it I could list it on eBay and see how much people are willing to pay for it. I am drinking a little vanilla cappuccino that my husband made for me and just enjoying a quiet moment on this Sunday while the kiddos nap after church. So I, I hope that you are able to enjoy a quiet moment with me and do some crafting and maybe have something yummy to drink on. I'm trying to pay extra careful attention of where I'm looking at the camera today. I I think I was looking um, at the wrong spot last time, so I apologize for that if I seem distracted, but I have the camera facing me so I can see what you can see, but as a result, I, sh I need to remind myself not to look at myself, but instead to look at the, the little black dot on the screen. So I hope that I'm looking at the right place this time, and I just want you to know that um, if I do ever look away, it's not it's not to be rude to you, but just because it's it's a little nerve wracking to to hop in front of the camera, and it can be difficult to realize where you're looking at while you're doing the actual recording. So bear with me through that. So, like I said, I have a lot to share with you. I finished quite a few objects this month and just did a lot of preparation knitting, I guess. Um, I wanted to catch up on a lot of projects and get them to like easy parts so that whenever uh, the baby is born, I have really mindless knitting that I can work on whenever I know that my mind's going to be occupied with other things. So. I have put in quite a bit of work this month and I would love to share it with you. First let's start with some finished objects. So I finished two pairs of socks this last month. Um, as I'm sure you know if you've seen this podcast before, I knit each of my kiddos um, a pair of birthday socks, Christmas socks, as well as Halloween socks. So. I just was finishing those up. I only have one more pair to go out of, I think nine was my goal because I have three kids to knit socks for and each kid got at least three pairs. So, so this is the first pair. This is um, so a Halloween pair of socks for my two-year-old daughter and the prettiest yarn. Um, this is PMW Pearls Co. in her Monster Mash colorway. I absolutely love this yarn. For one skein, I was able to get three pairs of kids' socks, and I used every last bit of it. So I am so happy with that. It felt great to use the entirety of a skein and get so much knitting out of it. Um, the second pair I was able to finish was my oldest son's Christmas socks. So again, this is PNW Pearls Co., and then this is in her Mary Krampus colorway. So all I have left to do is to knit my two-year-old daughter a pair of Christmas socks out of the leftovers from these. 
and then I'm done. So that's really exciting. They have been a lot of fun to work on and I love knitting with um, self-striping yarn and this yarn company's striping yarn did not disappoint at all. Her colors are so beautifully saturated and really clean lines. And um, if I do this again next year, I, I might have to check out her shop again and see what other holiday colorways she has to offer. My third finish object this month is a vest that I knit for my seven year old. Um, he loves to wear a vest to church every Sunday. And I mentioned to him that I could knit him a vest and so I wanted to surprise him for his birthday with this. This is called the Hobbit Vest with Pocketses. And the designer is Lisa Chimmery, I believe is how you say her name. I knit the size 8. And it's in this really beautiful yarn. This is Knit Picks. Let's see. Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Tweed in the Lighthouse colorway such a pretty yarn. It's really difficult to capture this color. Um, I think I described it last time. It reminds me of like an oil spill color. It's black definitely but it also has um, green and blue all throughout the yarn. It is really really pretty. So this is totally done except for the buttons. I told my son that if he wanted to make buttons, because my husband knows how to do that, that um, that would be a fun project for them to do together in the garage. So that is their plan. And um, I'm still saying that this is finished though because really I've given it to him. He just needs to do the last bit of work. So he was really happy with it and I was I was actually nervous that it was going to be too big but I, whenever he put it on it fits so well. It's a really beautiful pattern. And this was the first time I had ever done, I don't know if you call them set in pockets, but you know whenever you knit the body and then you bind off stitches and then pick them up and knit the pocket and then at the end you seam them. That was the first time I had ever done that. So that was a really fun challenge. I think I could do better next time, at least with the seaming part, but thankfully, since this yarn is so dark, I feel like it's very forgiving. You can see, you know, I might have a little bit of puckering, but overall, I was really pleased with how, how that ended up. I don't think I have anything left to say about that. It was a really fun project to knit and um, the texture was really enjoyable to see come alive in this yarn. My last finished object, if you have watched before, you have definitely seen this. This is the Linux Pullover, which is a upcoming design by Anna Daku, I believe is how you say her last name. She is the Bluebird Box Knits on Instagram as well as YouTube. This is a beautiful textured pullover that has a lattice motif all throughout. It's knit bottom up um, and you knit the sleeves separate and then join them together and then you have this really deep yoke that kind of gives it like a, a sweatshirt feel but like a, a nice sweatshirt. <laughs> um, a wooly, textured, timeless piece. I'm so happy that this is complete. And I think that it's going to be perfect to wear this winter, especially postpartum where it's oversized and cozy. That's going to be what I want to wear in those um, days after baby. I knit the size three and I don't know if I already said this pattern is not released quite yet, but if you follow her on Instagram, I know that she will post when it's going to be released and I will try to make a post as well. I believe that she was going to try to post it in October. So if so, it is coming up quickly. And 
I don't know what else to say about this. This was the first time I had ever done a folded over collar. So at the end, you pick up the stitches around the neckline and then you knit like double the length for the neckline for the collar and then you fold it in. And she has a video tutorial linked in her pattern that shows you how you can half seam it, I think is what it's called. So like um, half of your stitches are live and then the other stitches, I think it's kind of like you kitchener it to the stitches that you already had bound off. I can't totally remember now, but I remember doing it in the pa um, the video that she has linked is um, very clear and easy to follow. And I absolutely love the finished look of this. It looks so polished. So this is the right side of your work. However, the way that she designs it, you can choose to wear it inside or outside. So you would have, I think that she might call this like the bubble stitch or like, I'm not totally sure if that's what that would be called, but it's just the, it's just the back side of your lattice stitch, but it kind of looks like bubbles. So maybe that's, maybe that's where I just came up with that name. Um, so if you seam it really well, then you can wear it inside or outside, which I really took my time with grafting the armholes and tried to hide all the ends that I had to weave in so that I could choose to wear it whichever side I want. So I'm not going to try this on for you this podcast just because the belly is quite large, but I hope next time I can at least try it on for you if not wear it depending on how hot it is here in Texas. I think that's all I wanted to say about it. Oh, the yarn, this was Wooly Mammoth in her limited edition yarn. Um, let me check on the name just to make sure. So this is her Cumbrian four ply and it was called the Enchanted Forest colorway. So like I said, it was a limited edition yarn. So you can't get this anymore. However, all of her limited edition yarns are woolen spun. So if you wanted to knit something similar to this, you could check out um, her other limited edition yarns, which I know that she has um, at least some in her shop right now. I think she just released her Causeway yarn, and that would probably be a really beautiful substitute if you're looking to knit something similar to this. I think that's all I wanted to say. It's, um, yeah, it was such a joy to work on this. And look at that texture. Oh. I'm so excited to have this in my wardrobe. I think that it's gonna be one of those timeless pieces that go with so many things and just add a lot of value to my wardrobe. So those are all the finished objects that I have for this month, but I have quite a few works in progress to share with you. I figured that I would share with you the updates I have on some works in progress that I shared with you last month. Um, I am knitting the Dahlia Scrap Gan by, mm, blinking on the designer's name. Oh, Jess Copham, I think is how you say it. I will put her name up here so that you can read it. But I decided to try and crochet a blanket for my two-year-old daughter as well as um, our upcoming son because I knit a blanket for my oldest two and I really want the youngest two to have a blanket created by me, but I just haven't been able to keep up. So I decided to try out this pattern. I was really inspired by Amber Crawley of Makers Haven. She posted a video a couple months ago um, talking about the blanket that she was creating out of this pattern. So it looked easy enough and that it would crochet up quick, but um, making two blankets, you know, it just it just still takes time. 
this last month I was able to complete all of the centers or the puffs of the blanket and then now I'm working on putting the square around each puff. So I will show you the three that I've been able to finish. This is for my daughter's blanket. Here's the first one. So this month I finished all of these puffs for her blanket and his blanket. And I'm also trying to make her a baby doll blanket. So I completed the puffs for the baby doll blanket as well. And then now I'm just going back through and putting the squares around each puff. And since I've only done three so far, I'm not super fast at the square portion. It takes quite a bit of concentration. This is a free pattern. I don't know if I mentioned that, but she has it on her blog as well as YouTube tutorials. And she also has a PDF pattern that you can pay for if you want to get rid of all the ads. So I feel comfortable saying, talking about this in depth. So for the first row, I think it's called a row. I'm not totally sure with crochet, but for the first row, it's really simple. You just do double, double crochet, I think is what it's called. And then the second row, you have to establish all the corners of the square. So that takes a bit of my brain power and focus. So this is something that I haven't been able to work on during the day much, unless I somehow have a moment um, where I can really focus on what I'm doing. So I've only completed three. For all three blankets, I have 49 puffs. So I've got a ways to go, but it's really enjoyable to work on. I think just having a different motion with my hands and I re have really enjoyed the challenge of having to focus on a skill that I'm not very familiar with. So when I do get to sit down and work on this, I really, really enjoy it. I want to block these three and weave in the ends just to make sure I think you can see they're kind of wrinkly, but I think that's okay. I think that it'll block out and yeah, lay flat, but it might be a good idea to block them now just to make sure that it's all going to work out right in the end. For these, I'm using um, the tulip yarn, uh, tulip hook. I'll link it below what I got. Um, the crazy sock lady she recommended this I want to say it might be called tulip edamo but like I said I'll link it below I have loved this hook it is so gentle on your hands and really easy to work with so I think that's adding a lot to the enjoyment of this project is having a really good hook because the hook for these puff stitches was significantly bigger, so it was just a little less gentle on my hands, to say the least. But that is work in progress number one. That'll probably be a bit of a long-term work in progress, just because, like I said, each square takes quite a bit of focus and time for me. But it's been really enjoyable to work on, and I can't wait to have those completed someday. Let's get into work in progress number two. So I have an entire basket here <laughs> of socks, sock whips, and they're actually all at the same stage of each other, which was a really big goal of mine this last month. Just like I said, I was working towards getting all my projects at an easy part for postpartum days and I was able to accomplish that with all of my socks. So let me dive in here and pick one to share with you. So here is sock whip number one. The, this is a pair of socks that my friend Laura from the Back Porch Fiber Co. and I are knitting together. Her and I decided to do a bit of a share a pair of socks. We purchased some yarn from Kayla of the Naughty Pine Fiber Co. and then we divided it in half and cast on a pair of socks that were just copying exactly what the other person's doing. So the same type of cuff and leg and heel and then obviously 
foot length will be different, but um, besides that, everything's the same. So this is where I'm at. Laura has actually already finished, which is so unfair, but I'm saying she has smaller feet. So maybe she has an advantage, um, but I also have way too many works in progress right now. So that's also not uh, doing me any favors. So like I said, this is Naughty Pine Fiber Co. yarn. This is her Cider Donuts colorway and then Country Roads and Mountain Morning for the heel. So we did 30 rows of one by one twisted rib. And then I think that this is like 36 or 38 rows for the leg. It was a really random number, but we both thought that it looked like a good length. And then um, a slip stitch heel flap and gusset, which fits me the best. I know that Laura can wear um, short row heels for her socks, but I think I do have really big feet. <laughs> so I think that the heel flap and gusset just gives me that extra room that my feet need. And she said that this fits her well as well. Well as well. Um, so she was able to do the heel flap and gusset. So like I said, I have been able to get to the easy part on all of my sock whips. I just finished the gusset decrease on this one, on both, both of them. And now all I have is plain stockinette in the round for, for the foot. I think that this will be really, really nice to have after baby boy arrives to work on because it's very mindless, very portable, and if it takes me months to finish, I'm totally okay with that. I decided to enter these in the Falling for Leaves so Sock Cow by Earth Tones Girl. I don't know if really these are gonna qualify anymore. I, I was a little bit confused by the rules because she says that you're supposed to knit a pair September, October, November, I believe. So since I didn't finish these in September, I'm not sure if that will count anymore. But maybe you can just knit one pair for the whole three months. I'm not sure. I need to look into the rules. Or if the rules are that you need to knit one pair each month. And if so, I did not make that deadline. And that is totally fine. But these socks definitely feel fall to me and they've been really fun to work on as our weather here is changing and cooling down and becoming much more enjoyable to sit outside and knit in. So that is sock whip number one. And then sock whip number two, which I don't believe I had had cast on last time either. So Sherry from the Ollie and Bella Instagram and podcast had mentioned on her stories probably a month or so ago um, of knitting a pair of socks with one of her friends and using the hashtag back to Hogwarts socks. I thought that sounded so much fun. So it was just a really loose, maybe a knit along, I'm not sure, or just an invitation to cast on your own pair celebration for yeah, fall and the school year starting again. And I think the idea was to knit a pair of Harry Potter inspired socks. So maybe like a Harry Potter pattern or Harry Potter yarn. I had this in stash and I thought, oh, I would love to join in on that. That is so much fun. I absolutely love Harry Potter and definitely the fall and winter season. That's when I want to reread them and, um, rewatch the movies and just yeah get into the Harry Potter theme so I thought what a great invitation to cast on a pair of Harry Potter socks so I am using a pattern or a sock recipe from Lindsay of a wooden nest it has been on my list to try these socks for a really long time she has a blog post describing this recipe that I'll link below I think she titles it the Simple Sport Weight slash DK Socks. 
So she uses, and this is a free pattern, so I feel fine talking about it, but she uses size two needles. She gives you a recommendation for where, for the stitch count to cast on and give you a jumping point. And then she holds fingering weight yarn held double. So since my kids love hand knit socks and I really love to knit socks for them, but I know I've spoken about this in every podcast, so I apologize for repeating, but with us adding more children, it's hard to keep up with their growing feet. So I wanted to experiment with thicker weight socks that could be knit up faster and see how I liked them. I decided to knit a pair for myself first. So this is a pair of adult size socks. I used the stitch count that she says in her pattern. I believe it was 52 or 56 stitches and I'm just following it exactly. I wanted to experiment with her exact recipe and then tweak it if I wanted to. But so far I have really, really enjoyed this pattern. It is so much fun to knit on. It does knit up really fast. I don't think I could, you know, crank out a pair of socks in a week, but but it's still significantly faster than the fingering weight. And I love the fabric that this is creating. It is so dense and squishy, and it feels really, really durable, which, you know, investing the time in hand-knit socks, you really want durability to be, at least for me, that's a priority of mine. So I knit, the contrast color is Knit Picks Hawthorn Fingering in the silver tin colorway. And then my main color is a homespun house. Xenophilius explains the Deathly Hallows. So that was my Harry Potter inspiration for these socks. And I am knitting, I have the cutest little progress keeper to keep me company. This one is Hagrid. And then I also have Hedwig. I believe that both of these are from Simply Serving. She makes such cute, whimsical stitch markers that bring me a lot of joy to have on my knitting, especially whenever you're knitting themed socks. So just like my last pair, I was able to get through the gusset decreases and now I am just knitting away on the foot. I was a little bit nervous that with using size two needles and holding the fingering weight double that it was going to be really dense for me to work on, but it hasn't hurt my fingers at all, which is a, another big factor for me. I don't want to be knitting on something that's just going to tear up my hands, but so far these are a huge winner. I'm really excited to see how they wear because after I finished the heel, I did slip them on to circular needles, like Magic Loop, and tried them on. And I think they are going to fit so well. So I will keep you updated on these. And yeah, I don't know. I might have a new favorite sock pattern to work from. Or sock recipe, I should say. It's so my third pair of socks. I told you, I have a lot of socks going right now. This is the last pair of kid socks I have to make, or I get to make. Um, I've been really enjoying working on these, so I don't feel like it's a chore, but, but it will be nice for all of them to be finished. This is the pair of Christmas socks that I have for my two-year-old daughter. So this is finishing up the last bit of yarn that I had from the PNW Pearls Co. And this is in her Mary Krampus colorway again, which you saw in my son's finished socks. I didn't have enough of the contrast color to use for the cuffs and toes and heels. Um, but this is a skein of knit picks that I had in my stash that I think match really well with the feel of this yarn. The theme, the color theme of this yarn. It's very Christmassy. Not much to say about these. Um, I believe I cast on 48 stitches. I'm using the same recipe that I've been doing for hers, which is 
48 stitches on size one needles and then I'm using the shadow wrap heel is that what it's called yeah shadow wrap heel and I got that from my friend Laura's sock pattern that I will link below but I know that you can find this heel recipe in multiple different patterns there's probably even YouTube videos for them and I love how fast that heel works up and it fits my kids really well so since they don't need the heel flap and gusset that is definitely my go-to for theirs because I can finish a heel in like 30 minutes for them which is significantly faster than what it takes me to do a heel flap and gusset and that's all the new sock whips that you haven't seen. I also still have my Hermione's Everyday Socks. These are being knit up in a Knitter's Homestead yarn in her Gardenia colorway, which I've spoken about this before. I put this one on hold just so that I could catch up on all the other socks and get them to the same place. So this one is also just on the foot. And it is a patterned sock. It's a free sock pattern on Ravelry and it's really easy to memorize so if I just have a little bit of focus in my day I can work on these. I don't think I have anything else to say. It's a really really beautiful yarn and these actually would work for that back to Hogwarts sock knit along just because they're the Hermione's everyday socks which I am assuming is a Harry Potter reference. So that is the sock talk. I am finished with all of that and I have two more brand new works in progress to share with you. I forgot to mention where I got this basket from. This is from my friend Laura's shop, Back Porch Fiber Co. on Instagram, or Etsy, sorry. Um, yeah, this is one of those really fun Bolga baskets that hold your knitting so well and I just wanted to share it off because I always find it really interesting what people use to hold their projects in. And this is a perfect size for, you know, four pairs of socks. I have plenty of room in here for whatever I may need to carry around with me. My next work in progress is also in another basket from her. I really like this one because it's an open top. So it's easy to work from instead of having the handle cover the top, since you have two handles on each side, it's really easy to just pull your work in progress out and knit directly from the basket. So like I said, this is a brand new work in progress. I don't even know if I had had plans or set in plans to cast this on last time, but it's a really special project. Once I finished my Linux pullover, I was just itching to work with Woolly Mammoth yarn again. Her yarn is so special and um, it just adds so much to the experience of knitting for me to use non-superwash yarn. So when I finished that sweater, I felt like there was a bit of a gap in my whips that I needed to fill. I recently re-watched all of Emma's podcasts, um, Emma as in Woolly Mammoth Fiber Co. I don't know if any of you guys do that, but when I need some inspiration, I love to go back to some of my favorite podcasters and I'll just start from the beginning. I recently did that with Lindsay of A Wooden Nest as well. I just started from episode one and re-watched all of her episodes and I left so inspired and I feel like I, I pull something from their episodes that I may have not pulled the first time that I watched them. Also just being in different seasons of life, I feel like certain things stick out to you more whenever you watch them again. So that's what I did with Emma's podcast again and I kept seeing this sweater that I had loved whenever she first, you know, talked about it whenever she first released her podcast but but seeing it again I just knew that I would love to have that in my wardrobe um 
it looks like the perfect fit for me. It reminds me a little bit of the fit of my Birkin sweater by Caitlin Hunter, which is a colorwork yoke sweater. And it has, at least my version, kind of has an A-line shape to it. It's not knit with an A-line shape, like you don't do any waist modifications to it, but it may have just been the way that I blocked mine. I feel like it's one of my best fitting sweaters, if not the best fitting sweater that I have ever created. So I wanted to find something similar to that. And that's whenever I decided to knit the Skilgra. I'm saying that so wrong. I really apologize. Skilgra sweater. Um, I will post it up here of how you at least um, write that because I'm sure I just butchered that and I totally apologize. But this is the sweater that I kept seeing in Emma's podcast that just kept catching my attention and drawing me in. And she was talking about the yarn that she was knitting it in, which was a limited edition yarn. Um, it's 100% Jacob's wool. She produced it years ago, I believe. And, um, but she kept talking about just all the different characteristics of the yarn and how much she loved the base. And I was so drawn into that that I decided to look on Ravelry D Stash, which I highly recommend if you can use Ravelry to check out the D-Stash feature. I have found some amazing yarn through that feature that has definitely been some of the favorite yarn that I've curated for my stash. And I took a chance and just decided to um, email some people that had this yarn listed in their stash. And one woman was willing to part with three skeins of it. So let me get the yarn for you and show you. So here it is in its skein form. This is limited edition, like I said, woolly mammoth and 100% Jacob's wool. And this is just its natural color. It's a really beautiful warm gray with flecks of white and brown throughout. It is, oh, this is what makes my heart sing with knitting. Um, working with yarn like this. This to me is not scratchy at all. I'm sure that a lot of people would say that it's rustic, but um, I have definitely worked with more rustic yarn than this. It is a beautiful yarn that I can tell is gonna be durable and long lasting. It's so, so special. I couldn't believe that um, I was able to find three skeins that somebody was willing to, to sell to me. And um, yeah, so I once I got it in the mail, I swatched and cast on. I do have my swatch, I'll get that for you. So it's not the biggest swatch in the world because I needed to swatch in the round. And with three skeins, I think I'll be okay yardage wise. However, I don't think I'll have any leftovers. So I didn't knit it lengthwise as long as I should to get the correct um, row gauge, but I was most concerned about my stitch gauge. So, so here's the swatch washed and blocked and I got right on gauge, which is amazing. The first time I'm just using the recommended needle size, which is US 2.5. And oh, it blocked so beautifully. This is really lovely yarn that, um, yeah, ticks all the boxes for me, 100%. So let me show you my sweater. I'm knitting the size four, and I am going to do the A-line shaping. So. I think that the bust size will be 42 inches and then with the adding the waist shaping it'll flare out to 47 inches which my Birkin sweater has about a 45 inch bust but it's all the way through so I thought that this would be a good 
compromise for that 42 to 47 at some point it'll hit 45 and <laughs> hopefully the fit is good but so far I'm loving it I have finished all of the lace so you do a provisional cast on for the neck band and you do short rows in the back and then you do this really beautiful lace chart which she calls her drop drooping blossoms lace I think is the inspiration behind it I hope that you can see that my plan is to possibly steam block this I actually might contact Emma and see if she has any insight on that I have never steam blocked actually I have once I have steam blocked a project while I was working on it but I don't really know the rules per se of of what fibers are okay to steam block and which are not so if you have any insight on that I would love to hear it because I don't want to felt this by accident so I'm not sure how that works but I would love to see how much the lace opens up mainly just so I can get an accurate measurement for when to divide for the sleeves this has been my main focus knitting I took time off from the Dahlia scrap can so that I could get further on this because my goal is to split for the sleeves before baby boy arrives and then I will just have miles and miles of stockinette stitch to keep me company which would be really lovely let me try it on for you yeah so here you go I think the fit's gonna be perfect I just don't want to accidentally pop off any stitches. Um, I'm probably just going to follow Emma's recommendations for the neckline. I think she did some extra decreases on hers because the neckline was a bit wide. So I'll probably do the same. I saw some other people on Ravelry discuss that as well through their project page. But I don't have to decide that till the end. So, so yeah. That is, this has been bringing me so much joy to work on. The Skeel Gra sweater. <laughs> A lot of you are probably like, oh no, that is so not how you say that. <laughs> but I have finished the lace. Now I believe I do a few more short rows and then knit to a certain length and divide for the sleeves. So. That will probably be my main focus this week because he's coming quickly and I need to get cracking on this to get it to a place that I am happy with. My last work in progress is also a new cast on that you have not seen before. Where did it go? <laughs> um, once again, um, shamelessly, a project basket from Laura. I love this one. It's um, natural and it has these really pretty like, lace bits. Yeah, I really enjoy this one. So Heidi and Lana is a yarn company. The dyer's name is Margaret. I don't know if you're familiar with her or not, but um, I have always wanted to try her yarn. Um, and just haven't yet I haven't uh, made the purchase yet so recently she released a new shawl called the coffee break shawl and it's this really pretty neutral shawl but with pops of color all throughout but the colors are definitely in my wheelhouse of colors and they're not they're playful but they're not like screaming bright so when I saw her shawl pattern I totally fell in love with it and I thought it would be a really fun way to try out her yarn because it's six different mini skeins plus a full skein so I thought it would be great to be able to try out seven different colors in one project so she posted um, kits for these a few weeks ago and I was able to pre-order one I will post a picture of what the shawl actually looks like so that you can see it if you haven't seen it already and then these are the minis that she has i have them all wound up 
so much fun. These were absolutely beautiful colors. This is on her seed fingering base, I think is what she calls it. It's 90%, let me just look because I have one right here. 90% superwash merino and 10% nylon. It's a really interesting base. Um, it doesn't seem as soft as the typical superwash sock yarn that people, a lot of dyers use. Um, it has a little bit more of, of that textured feel that I really enjoy working with. Um, I'm not totally sure why it does. I, maybe just the mill that she uses, she's able to accomplish that. Um, this is the main skein. I believe this colorway is called Barley. I just purchased the kit that was her original colors. And here is my shawl progress. I literally got this in the mail and wound it up and cast it on the same day because I was so excited to see it and get started on it. It's a really fun pattern that, um, just has different textures and colors all throughout, so it really keeps you engaged. And yeah, I think it's one of those popcorn or potato chip knits where you think, just one more row, just one more row, just one more section, one more color. Um, so I just cast this on a few days ago and I've already made quite a bit of progress. It's, yeah, it's so much fun to work on. So this is, I've used three different colors from the mini skeins, and then I'm just about to finish up this section and then start on the fourth mini skein. Yeah, such a fun pattern, and I've been good, and at the end of every section, I go back in and I weave in my ends, and then at the end, after I block it, I will go ahead and snip them. But that has made it way less daunting to just keep my darning needle inside my basket and weave them in as I go. I think that might be it to say about that shawl. I, I don't know what else to say about it other than it's been really fun. It kind of reminds me of the Color Craze shawl by Tammy Gore, which I knit. Um, I finished a few months ago, I should say. I had cast that on and it had languished for a long time, but this is giving me a similar vibe to that because uh, you get to play with so many different textures and colors and it just makes the project really engaging and fun to work on. So far none of the stitches have been difficult to work on or the sections. I was curious, um, mainly especially this last one. I wasn't sure how you created that texture, but it is super simple and um yeah it's just one of those that you kind of get in your head really easily and then your hands just follow so i'm thankful for that and i don't think i have anything else to say about that one i i hope to keep working on it that's been my kind of well all of my knitting is like treat yourself right but uh that one, I just, I just have been having so much fun with it that when I sit down and work on it, it really feels like a treat to work on. With, um, when I ordered that shawl kit, she had also posted a few sock sets of her cappuccino sock set, which I was totally bummed. She had um, released this a few months ago. And I just kept talking myself out of getting it. I don't know why, um, other than, you know, I just wanted to keep my uh, yarn purchasing low. But uh, so I had talked myself out of purchasing it then. And then whenever she posted it with the shawl kits, I was able to get one. And I am so excited to cast these on. I think that if the wooden nest sock recipe fits me as well as I think it's going to, that is what I'm going to cast these on with, doing the, holding the fingering weight double and using the size two needles. 
So this will probably be my next sock cast on after I finish those four socks that I already have on the needles because I love this colorway. My coffee of choice is definitely cappuccinos. So I think it would be really fun to knit, knit on these. I think the last thing I wanted to talk with you guys about today, yarn and knitting wise, was a spinning class that I was able to take this last month. Our Houston Spinning Guild, or Weaving Guild, I think is what it was called, hosted a beginner's spinning class that I was able to sign up and participate in. It was a three hour course where you got to learn or practice on a drop spindle as well as a wheel. So they had, I wanna say six different wheels that you could try out and practice on and see if you enjoyed them or um, yeah, if you wanted to become a member of the guild, I think was probably one of their main goals and also just to give you an introductory to spinning and I had a lot of fun in that class. It was significantly more difficult than I was expecting. Um, honestly, this is a little embarrassing to share, but the instructor was telling us that, you know, every once in a while she gets kind of a prodigal in her class that just picks it up really easily. And she's, um, she's always kind of surprised by that. Um, but some people are just natural spinners, I guess. Um, and in my head, you know, I was like, oh, well, I'm, I'm pretty like an avid knitter. You know, I am definitely a knitter with a capital K. So I've got all this fiber stuff in my blood. I'll be a natural spinner. Maybe that'll be me. Maybe I'll be the star of the class. Um, that was not the case at all. I was honestly probably the worst. If, if, not, if not one of the worst, then the top worst. I was not very good at it. It did not come naturally to me. Um, but that was exciting for me because I love a challenge and I love learning something new. So I saw the potential in spinning of how much I had to learn. And it's something that that I'm interested in, in adding to my crafting life. Um, and so, so I, I'm excited to try try again and keep practicing, but yeah, definitely not a natural born spinner at all. <laughs> so the class was really fun. Like I said, she gave us stuff to bring home. Um, we got these two fibers to work on. I've already used some of them, mainly from the white. I've been saving the purple. She used to have a yarn store maybe so she had this like on hand to just give out as little freebies I just took a little bit because I felt bad taking a lot but um, this was the one that we practiced on in class and I think she said it was like a medium medium wool fiber if any of you have spinning experience I'm sure that you understand what that means but like I said this is just scratching the surface for me and I don't really know what I'm talking about if you can't tell. So these we got to bring home from the class. This was part of our, you know, fee that we had. And then she had drop spindles in class that you got to practice on, but um, none for purchase, which I had kind of gone in thinking that if they had a drop spindle for purchase, I might consider purchasing it but they didn't. So I looked on Etsy and I just found an affordable spindle. And I want to say it's called a top spindle. Like I said, not totally sure. This I'll put the Etsy name here for you. I want to say, say that it was Coats & Co, but it was a really reasonably priced shop. And that was that's kind of what I wanted. I didn't want to spend a lot of money because like I said, not a natural born spinner. I really hope that I can figure it out, but I need a lot of practice and a lot of time before I am even ready to consider spending a lot of um, money in this new hobby. So 
affordability affordability was my main focus for purchasing this spindle and it looks like a really simple one it's nice that there seems to be such a range in how much money you can spend which that's with knitting right like you could knit all from um your big box stores and it would not be a big financial investment which i really appreciate or you can save up and use you know breed specific yarn uh like i was talking about earlier and spend a little bit more money or spend more money yeah i just i really and i really like that there is a large range because yeah it makes it more accessible for everyone so this is the drop spindle that i got it was similar to the one that i got to practice on in class and she said that it was a good beginner style so that's what i was looking for i don't have any fiber or yarn to share with you because honestly i've thrown everything away after i practice because it's <laughs> it's really really bad um when i get to a point to where I feel like um, it might be worth sharing, saving and sharing, then I'll keep it. But like all the f yarn that I made <laughs> um, during the class, I, I left at the class. Um, which I probably should have taken a picture of hindsight just because it would be interesting to see that one day of how bad it was. But yeah, I, I just didn't, <laughs> I threw it away. So with um, this spindle, she had an option to add some fiber to it so that you could practice. So I just got two different fibers. Like I said, this was really affordable. And I thought that it would be a great way to practice and see what working with different fibers is like. And these were two that she recommended for beginners. So one was a fin top. And then one is Coriadale. So with these I got from the same shop that, shop that I got my spindle from. And yeah, that's it. That was um, the introduction to spinning that I had this month. I'm trying to get in the habit of practicing 10 or 15 minutes a day because from multiple sources I've heard that's that's how you're going to get to that aha moment that people talk about. So, so that's my goal is to find that aha moment. I think it will take me maybe a little bit longer than other people. Um, but it's been a really fun and enjoyable challenge. And it's just really nice to, to be able to connect with the fiber and yarn in a different way than just knitting does. Thank you so much for joining me in today's podcast. I think that's all I wanted to talk about and cover with you. Um, like I said, I'm 39 weeks pregnant. So the next time you see me, Lord willing, we will have baby boy in our arms and um, safely home with us. So I'm not sure when I will be able to podcast next, but hopefully in a month or so, that seems to be a really good schedule for, for this phase of life that I'm in right now. And I know that it can be a little bit of like, throw all this information at you. This is what I've been able to accomplish in a month. But yeah, just realistically, that's that's been the easiest schedule for me. So I really appreciate you taking time to, to sit down and hopefully you got some crafting in as you um, watched me recap my crafting. I don't know if I will have as much to share with you in a month as I did this month, but we shall see. Hopefully all of the preparation work I've done to getting all my projects at uh, an easier point of knitting will pay off. And I know that there's so many hours of cuddling that uh, a newborn um, yeah, gets to have so hopefully I can just sit and if I feel like knitting then I can hold him and knit and if not then that's okay and I hope to have something to share with you next month in the meantime I hope that you have a wonderful October and that you are able to carve away some crafting time for yourself
I'll talk to you soon. Bye.